Hey, pile drivers and bridge builders, let's pay attention to the recent collapse of the Francis Scott K Bridge and how the engineers that built that bridge did not pay attention to the very first bridge that's in our history as being constructed in ancient Rome in 50 BC. Let's go over it and let's talk about what they missed. The Rhine River lies on the edge of what is known. For centuries, it has been a buffer protecting Germanic tribes from Roman expansion. No previous army could cross it with the might needed for conquest. But Caesar is unlike any previous warrior. Have you ever heard of the term feed or front end engineering and design? You might have heard it if you've worked at Kiwit. And I can tell you that Caesar had feed engineering. Let's continue to watch. Keep in mind, this is 50 BC on the Rhine. The foundation of the bridge was a series of wooden piles driven into the bedrock of the river. Each pile was a foot and a half thick. Toward the middle of the bridge, they had to be up to 30 feet tall to reach from the surface to the bottom. By driving the piles in diagonally, Caesar's engineers added extra stability to the bridge. Okay, if you have a sharp eye, you may have caught it. It wasn't mentioned in the video, and I'm not talking about stability from driving battered piles. And this news organization out of Chicago can explain it better than I can. Into like at the Betsy Ross Bridge just behind me. You know, this is very similar to that bridge in Baltimore. It was built around the same time within just a few years, and it's almost the same total length as well. But this bridge has one big difference, and it's not what's on the bridge, it's what's in the water. Eight and a half million vehicles drive across the Betsy Ross Bridge over the Delaware River every year. And after the catastrophic collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore this morning, a similar structure, we wanted to know what safety measures are in place here. All of our bridges have protection systems in place to prevent ships from striking. John Hansen is the CEO of the Delaware River Port Authority. He's closely following this collapse, but he says the key difference sits in the Delaware River near the bridge support piers. When you talk about the Betsy Ross Bridge, we have concrete uh, dolphins that are protective against ships that will prevent a ship from striking the pier. That's what we have at the Betsy Ross Bridge. You can see those circular structures from Drone 6. And when you look at video from Baltimore, you don't see them near the support piers. Okay, let me just jump in here and say this bridge was finished in 1977. So it's not like an ancient bridge where they didn't know about huge container ships. Okay, the engineers, obviously, the people that were building the Francis Scott Key Bridge, I mean, they focused on naming the bridge after the person that wrote the Star Spangled Banner. But what they should have been focusing on probably was Caesar's Bridge. Because when Caesar built that bridge, his engineers, who I would arguably say had feed or front end engineering design, and they you know, in that process, you figure out all the things that you're going to run into. And what Caesar was worried about, or his engineers were worried about, was the Jumeric tribes were going to go upstream, chop down big trees, and float them down and destroy his bridge before it was even completed. But he did one thing to protect himself from that, and that was to drive dolphins and reinforced piles in front upstream of the bridge so that uh, the Germanic tribes could not tear his bridge down. So here we are with a bridge lesson from 50 BC that should have been implemented on the bridge in Baltimore. And by the way, many bridges in the US. So this should be a lesson for all bridge builders in the United States and throughout the world. I mean, don't you wish you could have been in the engineering room with those Ro Romans and listening to them? They were dealing with what is called flotsam or flotsam, F-L-O-T-S-A-M, which is debris floating and going down a river and damaging things. But 
but all of these Roman terms are still used today. So it's kind of fun to study these Roman terms. And if you look at some of the pictures that were drawn and pay attention to the Latin, you can see what it's saying here. Just take a close look at this uh, photograph here and let's translate the Latin. The Latin translation for what you're reading there is protection of the above bridges. 